Hey everybody, uh, we're testing the stream. Let me know if you can hear me okay, if I'm too loud, too quiet. Uh, we're gonna see how this goes. It's been a couple weeks, so I'm a little bit rusty. Apologies for the delay, we had to make sure that uh, OBS was working, it was being very strange. So I'm here at the library again, I've rented another room, and I specifically positioned myself so that way I would have a little bit of, uh, of dick over my left shoulder. My right shoulder? It's my left shoulder, it looks like your right shoulder. Yeah. There were a lot of other things I had to choose from that were a lot less appropriate, or a lot more appropriate, and I chose the dick. The D, as they say. All right. Let's see. Oh, it still says make a monster testimonia. That should have changed. Oh, good, it did. Okay, yeah. Seems to sound okay. I'm going to pop open the chat. That way I can check it out. Get everything ready to go. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I'm glad that we are finally back on the stream. It's been a while. Uh, they closed. I was out of town, and I had Emerald City, and then they closed the library for a couple of weeks because the end quarter ended. But we are here today to design Dr. Hubert. Now, you're going to have to forgive me. I have a very bad uh, case of allergies, so I may sound kind of gross today. For that, I apologize. Uh, let me pop out the chat. Oh, there it was. Fui. Just a moment, folks. Uh, yeah, it is something I want to display. I specifically chose it, Vaughn, for that reason. Because I liked that it said dick. That was, uh, that was a bug. Or that was a uh, feature, not a bug. All right. So I'm going to blow my nose super quick because it is full of mucus. And then we're going to get to work. Uh, one sec. I'm even going to mute the mic so that way you can't hear it because it's pretty repulsive. Still hear me, right? And a back. All right. So the task today is to design in actual mechanics uh, Dr. Hubert Hilkington, the good doctor and his wife. Uh, so let's go down here and let's look at the notes we have already come up with. It's been a couple weeks, so it's good to get back on the horse. Um, so things you know about Dr. Hubert, obviously he's an artificer, uh, and he began as a brilliant young mind, sort of pushing the boundaries of science and magic. Um, and the watershed moment of his backstory is that he has this experiment that goes terribly awry, and his beloved wife Elizabeth dies in the process. Um, so we wanted to make a couple modifications to the backstory, Mainly because in attempting to stretch the monster out into three different iterations, we thought that the sort of the time periods could be interesting. Like, at what point do you meet him? At what point uh, is he along his sort of road to depravity? Um, so we kind of had the idea before that he, <clears throat> excuse me, potentially um, was a partner with his wife, as opposed to his wife just kind of being a bystander. That maybe she was um, the lead scientist, and he's almost more of her assistant. Uh, is kind of interesting, especially because then when she dies, it's turned into a, to the golem. There's like this weird irony. Uh, we toyed with the idea that she was dying, had some kind of a consumptive disease or something like that. Although it's always weird in in D and D if you want to use something like, you know, effectively a cancer or like a, a life threatening illness, because there are plenty of spells you could cast to just get rid of things like that. But she's dying for whatever reason, and. Uh, so she wants to make this golem that she can then transfer her life essence into. And like golemancy or whatever is like her main focus. Mummy Rot's good, yeah. Something like that. Um, and so then the first stage, the CR5 version, you're encountering Dr. Hubert when his wife is still alive and he's basically undertaking missions to go and collect ingredients and things she needs to make this perfect simulacrum, this golem. Um because she's ill and like not able to travel or whatever. So he's out there and we had the idea that he 
sort of comes packaged with like the the wireframe or the like the automaton like the skeleton of what will eventually become elizabeth so it's this like big war forged esque a like, chassis um that's just like the under layer that doesn't have any flesh on it yet and, and what's interesting here too is that he's not he's ostensibly not evil quite yet right that he might be neutral they might be willing to do some shady things but it's all in the pursuit of keeping his wife alive uh but then by the time you encounter him at cr10 you know it's progressed quite a bit and she has uh basically attempted to go through this process either she dies before they're finished or she attempts to do it and it fails and she dies in the process and then uh we like the idea of the reason that instead of having the sort of beautiful yeah right transference to flesh golem is budget lichdom or lichdom like if you're not really a spellcaster right you know which i imagine she is not so she attempts to transfer to this flesh golem and it uh goes awry and the doctor is kind of forced to finish the experiment without her because she's either incapacitated or maybe, you know, you can make a point that, like, she it has to be strapped in and can't participate and he has to do it and he makes a mistake and that causes her to animate in this horrifying way. And so it's a lot about Dr. Hubert's, like, guilt and his denial that it's sort of his fault that any of this has happened. Um, and that's the CR10 version that you encounter is him with Elizabeth that he's kind of like stitched together and is telling himself like, no, it's fine. Here she is, my wife. Everything's great. The plan worked. And she's this lumbering, horrible monster. You know, maybe the, even when he finishes the experiment, she's kind of still falling apart and like still needs ingredients or needs uh, constant maintenance and things like that because it didn't go properly. And now that, that's the kind of venture you might encounter them on, you know, bodies are being stolen from graveyards that kind of a thing um and then by the time you get to cr 15 she's almost like a juggernaut elizabeth has become this like big hulking uh, uh monstrosity even more so than we saw her in the child um and hubert has completely lost his mind and is now sort of preferring her this way and they'll live together forever that kind of a thing um so i think at cr5 is what we're going to work on today we're going to start with anyway um What's tricky about this is that it's two monsters, ostensibly, right? And so the question becomes, how do you stat them up in such a way where you still want them to be a CR5 challenge, but individually, right? You can't have two CR5 monsters because then the CR for that encounter goes way up, becomes much more challenging, right? It wouldn't be appropriate for a CR5 party to fight them. So what we need to do first is we need to figure out what are the actual... Oh, I think we did already. Look at that. So Hubert is a CR1 here, and then uh, uh, the Automaton is a CR2. So they're actually relatively simple monsters when you first encounter them, because again, they're going to be sort of bifurcated like that. Uh, so let's maybe do that for CR10, CR15, just so that way we know what to, uh, is to be done there. Um, so with CR10, we still have him as a CR1, but that doesn't quite seem right for Hubert. So let's see what CR Elizabeth would be. Okay, I like to use Cobalt Fight Club. Uh, I'm not going to bring it up here for y'all because I don't think it would translate. Let me see how well you could see it if I do this. But what we're looking for, again, excuse my horrible nose. What we're looking for here is, yeah, it just doesn't translate. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I'll keep this here for you and I'll just make a new window for me. Apologies if you can't really see it. So we gotta basically crunch the numbers on this in terms of what CR monster do we need for the CR 10 Elizabeth. Um, okay. I still think that essentially she should be twice as powerful, quote unquote, as Dr. Hubert. Dr. Hubert is clearly a support character. So my instinct, let's say that they're a level 10 party, there are four PCs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my instinct is to say that she is a level five, a CR five. So let's say that. If you want to be a hard, yeah. Oh, I see, okay, so what is a CR 10 monster? That's how we can determine what we're looking for here. That way it's the same uh, XP. CR10 monster is worth 5,900 XP. So 5,900, if we want to do like two thirds sort of a thing, but again, it's that they're gonna be in combat together. That's the difficulty. So let's say, 
my instinct is to say that she's a CR5, which is 1800. And then if we put him at like a CR3, then that comes out to be 3750. So that's not quite right. Let me make sure I have all these numbers down because that might make it easier to grok. Sorry if this is kind of crunchy, but the target num the target XP here for a CR10 monster. Now I forgot what it was. So this is scintillating streaming, I'm sure. Abaleth is what I was looking at. So a CR10 monster is 5,900 XP. That's what we're trying to hit, or close to. I don't think it needs to be exact, but it needs to be in the ballpark. So let's say Elizabeth is a CR6 monster, maybe. Do we have a CR6? A CR6 monster is 2,300. And then let's say that Hubert is still a CR3 monster. That still isn't quite right. So let's say that Elizabeth is a CR7 monster and that Dr. Hubert is maybe a CR4 monster. That's pretty close. Okay, that's our target XP there is 6,000. So it's only about 100 XP off. So that actually would work out okay. So then Dr. Hubert is a CR4 at, uh, at CR10, essentially. And he, the and Elizabeth is a CR7. Okay, cool. Um, fascinating, I'm sure. Oh, whoa, hey, what's up, Sildari? Yeah, lower CR Elizabeth is basically a zombie. That's a good point, Vaughn. Um, Oh, I like that idea, Vaughn. Sorry, I didn't read all these. Uh, what about the idea that he somehow screwed up the goal of body before the transfer, like he left the cooler door open? That could definitely be a part of it. I feel like if she's uh, sort of the golem expert, she might catch something like that. I definitely think there's a lot of room for him to make mistakes in the procedure. One one thing that's nice about this, too, is that this is something I'm discovering as I'm writing the Agnama document, is that I'm leaving a lot of the backstory details up for interpretation for the DMs, right? Like we kind of suggest different backstories. It could be this, it could be that, it could be this, but we're not like hard locked into any of them necessarily because we want the DMs. DMs inevitably are gonna change them and do whatever they need for their campaigns. You wanna suggest some ideas, but that's a good way to put it. Like maybe he made a mistake early on that kind of caused all the rest of it to uh, disintegrate. All right, let's see. It's funny that you mentioned T-Rexes, Sildari, because we had that whole encounter in Dungeon Crawl today with multiple T-Rexes. Three T-Rexes, I think, showed up. It's like King Kong all over again. Um, okay, great. So then I want to do the CR-15 one really quick, as boring as that is, I know. So a CR-15 monster has what CR? Fascinating. 13,000 is our target number there. 15,000 XP. So then Hubert, so once again, if we kind of try to keep that same, I'm gonna look at her maybe as being a CR 10. Just leveling her up a little bit. That puts her at about half of it, yeah. And let's have him try to be like a CR 5. Where does that put us? 11. It's not quite right. Can we bump him to CR6 maybe? CR6. Give me a 6. 12, 13. Yeah, still not quite enough. Let's bump him to, or bump her, excuse me, to CR11. Let's see if that does it. That's a little too much. Um. So if we bump him back down to CR5, I don't mind the doctor not being as powerful. I think if anyone should be underpowered, it should be the doctor here. Yeah, there we go. It's about 500 over, but if the doctor here is CR5, he really doesn't change much. She gets substantially more powerful each time. Well, it's kind of a little uneven because he starts at CR1 and then becomes CR4 and then becomes CR5. So, like, I wonder if there's a better, a smoother progression there. You know, there might be another way to crunch these numbers. We'll keep this for now, but I'm kind of wondering if it's a little skewed. And then she's CR11. Because she goes from 
2 to 7 to 11. But we'll get there. I know for sure that 1 and 2 are kind of what I want to do for uh, uh, TR5. All right, after all of that, let's actually talk some stat blocks. Let me pull a Desdemonia stat block so we have something to work with here. Oh, yuck, look at that gross highlight. Um, let me get rid of this. Oh, shit. One second. We want to get that out of there. What? Come on. There we go. Okay, cool. Let's unitalicize it. So we're going to steal a stat block for formatting. We're going to drag it down here. So he's really only a CR1. So there's not a lot going on with the doctor right now. Let's look at what we talked about for his abilities. Give him a break. Okay. So doctor at this level, not fierce in combat, may have support abilities, gadgets, syringes, etc. Um, he's got random syringes, a D10. Yeah, that's right. We talked about the idea of him having a bag full of random syringes and they're all mislabeled. They're like you can almost immediately play with his kind of incompetence and wackiness as a doctor. Um, hey, Brooke, what's up? CR 12 and 6. Yeah, that might not be bad. That might be a good way to do it. Fun. Um, yeah, cool. So he's got... What ideas do we have? He's got a bag of random syringes. And I think he's almost entirely support. So I feel like he is casting a lot of effects on Elizabeth. Um, I think maybe the randomness can like come into it later, like the higher level he gets. So I wonder if he's not random initially... Um, if he knows what they are to begin with, but then um, once he gets crazier and crazier, he starts to kind of, he like stops labeling them and it's just like random chaos. So he might accidentally hurt Elizabeth or might accidentally help a hero. I think it's interesting. I uh, would make the point that they're all non-lethal effects. So I think it's like D6 maybe. He's got six different syringes he could potentially use. Um, and, then, and then the DM could just choose which one he's using. Um, he's got a hand crossbow for his primary weapon but I feel like it deals very, like, low damage, you know, kind of like the poisoned crossbow. And then I feel like he needs, yeah, something else, some other juice to make it more interesting at this level. So let's go down and let's start punching him in. Not Desdemonia, Dr. Hubert. Maybe he's, like, apprentice or something like that right now. So he's a medium humanoid. He is neutral right now. He becomes neutral evil. Oh, I gotta blow my nose. Apologies about how gross I am. One moment while I do this. I will definitely mute it this time. I'm back. Okay. Um, so his strength should be low. I think his current strength even right now is, is minus one. So I think he's got minus one strength. Oops. Oh, my option button stuck. Yeah, minus one. His dexterity I think is okay. I think it's like 12 dexterity. He's reasonably dexterous. His constitution's all right. I'm gonna give him 14 con. His intelligence is where he's the best. We'll give him 16 to start. His wisdom is pretty low. We'll start at 10, but then I think we'll degrade. His charisma's not impressing anybody either. We'll give it a 12, and that can also degrade as he gets crazier. Yeah, I think that's right, Vaughn, that he's got like a utility belt full of wackiness. I feel like he needs to have some other ability that kind of follows him through, because right now he's very, very under underpowered is the wrong term but you know what i mean his proficiency bonus is two because he's cr1 um he has i think it's intelligence and wisdom if you're an artificer i don't actually know 
His intelligence save would be plus five. His wisdom would be plus two because he's bad at it. He's got no resistances, no vulnerabilities of any kind. Um, his skills, I don't know yet, but we can get to. He just speaks common. Challenge rating is one. It's X amount of XP. Oh, let's use. I'm back. Gross. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, con and intelligence. Okay, I was wrong. Thank you for checking, Vaughn. Appreciate you. Constitution. Yeah, so he's actually okay. And then intelligence. The idea they have high con to like survive their mishaps, right? So traits, I'm not sure about. I feel like he needs to have at least one. That's the interesting thing about the Artificer as a class, is it's like so low on combat abilities. I'm gonna sneeze again, apologies. Got weird, I don't know why I'm so sneezy all of a sudden, because I'm on camera. Okay, um, syringes, medical bag. As an action, Dr. Hubert can withdraw and use one of the syringes. Isn't there, I think Critical Role fans could help me out here. Isn't there a, a kobold build? I think it's in Volos that I think Chris Perkins played in a recent adventure where it's just like, they have a bunch of random shit. It's like a kobold alchemist or something like that, or a trapsmith. And they have like a random table and you like just roll, like it could be any one of these things. There's some monster like that, because I feel like that might be useful in uh, determining uh, how to structure this at any one time. Um, choose or roll on the following table. determine which so okay let's think of six different kinds of syringes he could have in his bag right so um, a sleep one makes sense um, some of them could be helpful some of them could be attacks right like so you want at least one kind of healing syringe like basically a healing potion right um, cold inventor is that what it is thank you Vaughn you're a lifesaver with that knowledge. I'm gonna look up the Cobalt Inventor real quick and see how that's structured just for text. Because I think he has random abilities. He's this guy with the skunk in his backpack, right? Um, Cobalt Inventor. Here we go. Yeah, it uses one of the following options. Roll a D8 or choose one. The Cobalt can uh, use no more than, oh, I see. Can use each one no more than once per day. We can maybe get rid of that for for Dr. Hebert. I don't feel like that's necessary. But I want to get this text. What other kinds of syringes can he have? Um, yeah, man, I got to get D&D Beyond. I got to get it. Let's see. Dr. Hubert uses one of the following options. You could, do, you could do eight if we can think of them. Roll a D8 or choose one. He can use each one no more than three times per day. He's got acid. He's got alchemist's fire. He's got a basket of centipedes. He's got a grievous slime pot. He's got a rot grub pot. He's got a scorpion on a stick. He's got a skunk in a cage and a wasp nest in a bag. So he's got a lot of options. Let's do Z6 for now, unless we like really think of a bunch of them. So they can be spells, I think is smart. Uh, you know, if it if it if it did, Vaughn, I might, I might use it, but I'm not here asking for a subscription. It's not even something that I can't afford it, I just like haven't gotten gotten around to it. Um, but I would definitely use it. I wish I played more, 
I don't know if, if is D, D Beyond very helpful for DMs because like that's mainly what I do, right? Like maybe there's a good way to search monsters and things like that, I suppose. But it feels like it's a more player resource, which is great. But I don't know if I would get much use out of it. I I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna look up some low level spells, but we gotta think of some cool syringe ideas. Um, he has sanctuary, but he uses it more as a like spray bottle thing. Um, I'm trying to think of other good. Some of them can be detrimental, like sleep is obviously detrimental. Um, suggestion feels, any kind of charm feels weird, right? Like a love potion, I don't feel like he would be carrying. Um, well, I, okay, Vaughn, I guess I thought that it was like primarily for players to keep track of their characters and stuff. I don't use it, so I'm not familiar with how it works, man. Okay, let me look up some low-level spells. Uh, yeah, no charms, no illusions. I'm trying to think of, like, non-spell-related abilities. You know, what are some stuff we can put in there, some juice? Because um, that's what I like about the Cobalt Inventor, right? It has a bunch of, of like, we. I mean, he's got skunks in bags. He's got Alchemist Fire. He's got Acid. He's got the basic stuff. Um, but especially if you don't want him to be terribly, like, uh, violent right now, you know? If you want to have him have some some sort of pretense at being being peaceful, quote-unquote, or not, not quite insane or murderous yet. So what do we what do we do here? Show filters. Let's get low level spells. First, second, and third. Put those filters on there. I'm using D Beyond right now, actually. So I answer my own question. Is it useful for DMs? Entangle is good. Haste blur. Yeah, low level buffs. That's smart. So like Shield of Faith is one he uses. I feel like that's more of a gadget, but you can still put it in this category. I'll put it on there. Shield of Faith. All right, you reflavor it, presumably. What is going on? Something is up with my computer right now. Sleep, Healing Potion, Shield of Faith. I feel like there's more interesting. Jump is one that he uses in uh, The Child. But again, I feel like that's so limited in terms of what it can do. Right, in terms of buffing. I mean, I'll put it on the list. I feel like, we, yeah, gosh. I don't know why I'm not feeling very creative today. Um, You don't want damage. Do you want buffs? So like True Strike or, or um, oh, oh, maybe instead of Shield of Faith, you can do Blade Ward, you know, or something that, and again, like these don't have to actually be the spell, but it's something that like reproduces the effects. So for Shield of Faith or Blade Ward, there wouldn't be a concentration effect. It would be like an injection and they get that thing for a minute, right? Like all attacks against them have disadvantage for a minute, which is actually like relatively strong. Um, and it's like maybe they get harder armor or something like that. Um, I, I feel like I want some stuff that they can use like offensively to sleep, um, rave enfeeblement or something like that, right? Something that like saps your strength, that like weakens you. Um, not charming. Hold monster, like a, like a, a paralytic, maybe. Hold person, potentially. Bark skin, ah, bark skin might be what we're looking for there, yeah. So I think it's some kind of defensive thing. We can maybe come up with a good bark skin. There might even be like a fun way to do it where it's not even, it's none of those actual spells, but it has a similar effect. Like I could see it like the character grows an exoskeleton that absorbs a certain amount of damage. Right? That, like, 
It's almost like temporary hit points or something. Their AC goes up. And they gain 2d6 temp hit points or whatever. When the hit points are gone, the AC also drops. So the idea is that they like sprout this like weird coral or these like spines or exoskeleton, like some kind of thorns or whatever. You don't want it to feel too naturey. Oh yeah. Is that how uh, stone skin works? Man, I feel so dumb sometimes. Stone skin is perfect. Yeah, armor of Agathis is similar, but something like that, right? Where it's like a, a big reserve ablative armor. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, let me look at Stone Skin. Is that what Stone Skin does? Because there's something kind of cool about him having like much more powerful effects. You know? If he's just kind of a little dude. That like he's all about making her feel stronger. So maybe it's okay if uh his spells are a little juicier. Well, Stone Skin just gives you resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. But yeah, it lasts for an hour. So it's kinda like what you were saying, right? Where it would just stick around. It wouldn't be it's kind of like Blade Ward for an hour. Um, okay, I like some, something like this. Um, so there might even be a way to, like, take each one of these things, like, if it is sleep, right? And then say that it it's something like sleep but isn't exactly sleep. Or it has, what's the effect of sleep? These, what sleep does is it knocks someone out. So what's a knockout version, right, of this? Um... So healing potion, I like the idea maybe it gives regen. Instead of healing. So you could even have it like if somebody went down to zero or they got knocked out, it like brings them back. There could even be a fun thing with like it weirdly animating them after they die as opposed to it healing them. Um, there's a way to do jump. That's like a super athletic potion, right? So like super athletics. Their jump speed, jump distance triples or quadruples or goes up by 10. Triples, they gain a climb speed. They have advantage on all strength based athletics checks. And I'll say on all strength based skill ability checks. saves I mean he has he uses in large person but I feel like maybe maybe it's better contrary to what I just said maybe it's better to like slowly improve you know that like the higher level syringes are better abilities so in large reduce is the CR10 one right something like that okay um what's a cool like way around sleep hey Bran what's up yeah, exactly. It's a steroid. A familiar, he can shut these effects with her at higher levels. Ooh, that's cool. That's really smart, Bren. Brent, sorry, Brent. I always see your last name, Jens, and I think it's Bren, but it's Brent. Yeah, that's really good. Um, we're going to put that at 15, maybe. Shares effects with Elizabeth. Thanks for coming, buddy. Um, yeah, exactly. Steroids are perfect. That's a good way to think of it. Um, I can, might be able to call it that. Uh, so we need like a, so we have, I think sleep and a whole person are essentially the same idea, right? We need like a paralytic. Um, so if we want like a cooler or more powerful version of sleep, um, what does that do? Slash sleep. It obviously knocks them out incapacitates them um and they like normally to make it more powerful they just can't be woken up or something like that um other kinds of effects could be things like blinding that's so agnoma though brent brent um Let's see. I mean, six seems fine, but we gotta get rid of this whole person. It's another like 
spell or ability or something around that level we can play with. We have a defensive one, Shield of Faith. We have a healing one, Healing Potion. We have a sort of uh, performance-enhancing one uh, with Jump. I mean, there might be another angle there, right? Something that makes you more dexterous or more intelligent or something like that, but that feels kind of like you're treading the same ground. Um, the Knockout for the Paralytic... Blinding still feels kind of man, Like, it's basically... It's still an incapacitating thing, right? It's a slightly different version of that, but why blind someone when you could just incapacitate them? Um, so it needs to be something that does something else. It could be something that helps you with stealth. It could be something that... Um, what other, like... Social skills feel wrong. Like, you don't want to improve their ability to... Um, What if it's shrinking, right? We have enlarge, but what if he just says reduce right now? Almost like an Ant-Man thing where he can, he can reduce an enemy and make them really, really small. It's not terrible. Because again, trying to think like non-lethal uh, powers here. Things that don't deal damage. But like The construct can deal damage if it has to, but I can even see the construct doing a lot of like grappling, like it just holds you. Because it's just like, again, the, the exoskeleton right now. Or the endoskeleton, like the internal. So something with like reduce is kind of interesting. Again, the problem with the paralytic is it like takes, sucks all the air out of the room, right? Like why, what else, what's, what's different or even worthwhile to do instead of, uh, of uh, knocking them out? Maybe like a fairy fire effect, right? Making them easier to hit. Uh, this is tricky. He's being difficult, is old Dr. Hubert. Let's maybe think about it and come back. I feel like the construct is pretty simple to stat up. Right? We don't really need too much fanciness. Construct. It needs a cool name. Something like a chassis or chassis because i want it to be like as lifeless and and inhuman as possible at this stage that like uh it's a large construct construct unaligned oh does he still have 90 hit points and super high ac yeah we gotta get rid of that okay um his ac right now would be 11 I think he technically has like leather armor because he's wearing a uh, like a big coat. So we'll make that 13. Um, CR1 monster is not really rocking the hit points as far as I understand. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it'd be, but it would be like a couple of D's, D8s or D6s, right? It's nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, okay, that looks better. Whereas the construct is a CR2 at this point, so it's a little bit tougher, but that still doesn't feel very tough to me. I'm gonna look at that again, because that doesn't feel quite right. Cobalt Fight Club. Gotta get that Cobalt Fight Club, man, all the time. So the CR5 monster, we're looking for 1800 is our target number. So CR2, CR2 monster has 450 and a CR1 monster has. Yeah, that's nowhere near where it should be. Okay, that makes me feel better because like, I don't know how I got those numbers, but that's like half of what we need. So let's make Elizabeth with the construct a CR3 and then we'll make him a CR1 and we'll see how that goes. Still under, so let's make her a CR4 and him a CR2. Let's see how that looks. Cause so that will change some stuff. If she's four and he is two. Now that's too much. So she could be three and he could be two. But yeah, we're at this weird level of like, you want to get five, right? Yeah, this is not interesting. Hey, what's up, Jose? Thanks for coming. 
Um, okay, so do we think the construct needs to do anything besides hit people? Like, is that is that sufficient, do we think? I feel like it could be good at grappling. Slow is good. Yeah, slow is good. i put slow on there. Thank you, Brent. I think that's better than reduce. I'll keep reducing the list. Um, is whatever. I'm not 100% sure what the uh, other options are going to be here. We can come in and do these. It's got good strength. It's got 18 strength. It's big bruiser. Maybe we'll give it 16, actually. I don't think it's at full strength yet because it's just the chassis. I think it's somewhat more dexterous than him. It's very tough. We'll give it 16 as well. Its intelligence is nil. What is like a flesh golem? Well, flesh golem has some rudimentary intelligence, doesn't it? Flesh golem. Flesh golem has. Should brought my monster manual. A flesh golem has six intelligence. We're gonna give it even less. We're gonna give it four intelligence because it is not even. It is just a, an automaton. Honestly, I want to look at like animated armor and see what that's got because that's much closer to what I'm imagining. Which has one intelligence. I think that's really where we ought to be here. I think we're at one intelligence right now. And that when Elizabeth sort of takes over the chassis, then it can have six intelligence. But until then, it's got three wisdom, just like animated armor. Like this thing is essentially just an animated skeleton that follows him around. Shit, come on. And then it's charisma as one as well. It, I mean, it's just a thing. Minus five. Okay, cool. I like that. Um, saving throws, it probably does not have either. So it's a construct, right? It does have some immunities, I would imagine. It's got damage immunities. Actually should go up a little bit. Is that moving that around for you guys? Nah, not too bad, okay. Sorry, this is such a mess. Man, gross. Trust me, the Agnabod document's gonna look nice and pretty. I got some uh, art back from Neve for that. It looks really cool. Um, finally got a nice color picture of Agnema. And did, she redid the line art, which I'm excited to show you guys once it is ready. But it is immune to poison, it is immune to psychic. It is immune to many conditions. Blinded, charmed, deafened. Defend, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed. Question for the chat, I can look it up, but um, the animated armor has anti-magic susceptibility. Do you think that's something that you, that like do uh, iron golems have that too? Or is that just an animated armor thing because it's an animated item? You know, whereas a golem is like crafted. Um, I almost want to give it false appearance, but if I give it that, like, while the chassis remains motionless, it is indistinguishable from a normal skeletal chassis. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's not particularly helpful, and that's going to be pretty out of place. Let me look at the Iron Golem, unless chat can jump in there. Iron Golem. Because I do think it's made out of metal, right? But its skeleton isn't actually a skeleton. Yeah, it does not have that. It also doesn't have uh, the appearance thing. It does have immutable form, right? That's a golem thing. Does anyone know the origin of the, is, so the flesh golem is fire, the fear of fire comes from Frankenstein. The iron golem has fire absorption, which I never quite understood. Yeah, immunities are charmed, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, poison. I think that's pretty pretty much the same. This one I think is immune to being blinded because it doesn't have any eyes. Um, or deafened, right, because it doesn't have a... Well, maybe it does have an eye. I don't know. It's it's just the skeletal chassis. So I think I think we give it anti-magic susceptibility because I think that it's not a golem. It's a, an animated skeleton, right? It's like a they cast an animated object spell, essentially, on a... 
uh, an ordinary item. That's not ready. It's not. They haven't gone through the ritual to turn it into a golem. So I do think it has anti magic susceptibility. It's basically an animated armor that's souped up and more powerful. Anti magic susceptibility. Spell that right. The chassis is incapacitated while in the area of an anti magic. Field. If targeted by dispel magic, the chassis must succeed on a const. I hate this word. Saving throw against the caster's spell save DC or fall unconscious for one minute. That's interesting that it's just for one minute. It doesn't actually. It's not destroyed by that. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially a Warforged, but it's like a Warforged with no soul, right? It's just purely, it's a robot. It's purely animated. But it, and I think it also, like, it has no intelligence. It doesn't have any programming. It just, it obeys, you know, uh, Hebrew's commands. So maybe make a point about that um, as a bonus action. Dr. Hubert can issue a simple command to the chassis. Um, so slow is interesting. Let's look at some other conditions. I think slow is on the money. But I want to know what else there is we could do. That's interesting. Like restraining someone is kind of cool. Because they would still be, ooh, what about petrify? It seems too, too much, you know? For this level, it's definitely something we could do later. Slow is weird, because slow is not really a condition. It's a spell, right? Slow does some funky stuff. Yeah, that's actually a good one because it's not a, a traditional condition. It, it makes it feel a little bit more unique. An effective target's speed is halved. It takes a minus two penalty to AC and dexterity saving throws, and it can't use reactions. Oh, right, this one's con like complicated. Target's speed is halved. It takes a minus two penalty to AC and dexterity saving throws. I can't use reactions on its turn. It can use either an action or a bonus action. Not both, regardless of the creature's abilities or magic items. It can't make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Um, yeah, wow. Oh, the spell casting thing's really complicated. If the creature attempts to cast a spell, I wonder if we do like a reduced version of slow because I'm worried that this is a lot of text. Oh, interesting. Uh, you're saying CR1 doesn't... I don't think it's going to be CR1. At least not the uh, the chassis. Right? But you're saying that makes it uh, uh, too weak? Because I actually kind of think that that's one of the interesting things about it, right? As a chassis, is that it, it is susceptible to something like that. Um Maybe it has advantage on the save to be dispelled. Let me throw. It has advantage on that save. Because, like, golems traditionally have magic resistance, right? I could give it that. The Iron Maiden thing's interesting. Oh, level 5 players will have dispel. Yeah. We give it magic resistance, essentially. 
Yeah, I'm cool with giving it magic resistance. It's a golem. Or it's like a proto golem, right? So I think I think that's cool. I think it's neat to have them have that option to, to be able to dispel it. Because again, the other thing here is that like ostensibly he's not evil at this point. Maybe they're up against him for some reason. But there's nothing like chances are you might be you might even be working with them on this particular mission, right? Only to have them eventually sort of not turn on you, but like you have this horrible moment when you realize like, oh god, they can't be trusted. So Let's try to think of some cool names for these. So steroid, I think tranquilizer is a good one. A tranquilizer puts you to sleep, right? Or unless it just makes you tranquil. Um, I wonder if there's like a, I mean, slow affects you physically. Is there a way to do sort of a mood altering one? Like not a, not a charm, not a suggestion, but almost like a calm emotions thing, right? Oh, interesting. Would the goal would be susceptible to shatter. Uh, I think so. How does shatter work? Yeah, this is the starter construct. But I feel like it makes sense for it to have some of the golem abilities because it's not... It's like a kind of... Again, it's like a proto-golem. It has some of the things that are true about golems, but I think it also has some traits from animated items, right? Um... Yeah, look at Shatter. Shatter's interesting. It doesn't count as an object. I mean, I guess not, right? Like, Shatter... Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, Shatter says a creature made from inorganic materials such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage on this saving throw. So, yeah, Jose, you're right. It, it would have disadvantage. That's not something I think we need to codify here. I think that just... It is more susceptible to, uh, to Shatter. Is there some... So, like, some kind of a, like a calm emotions thing? Right, like it's not it's not sleep, but it like makes you oh zone of truth, like a truth serum, yeah, that's really interesting. So maybe it's like a calm emotions truth serum thing, or like just a little bit of both. Um, because yeah, basically yeah, it's like a Xanax, right? Like it just chills you out. I like that a lot. I don't know if that's the term we use. Yeah, calm emotions. So I think it's I think it's a little bit of combination of both. I feel like they have it's not zone of truth where it forces them to tell the truth or like they're not allowed to lie. I think it gives them disadvantage on all charisma checks. Um, causing a target, you can suppress any effect causing you to be charmed or frightened. Um, the target is indifferent. So Call of Emotions does one of two things. You can either, um, you can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. When this spell ends, any suppressed effect resumes provided that its duration is not expired in the meantime. Alternatively, you can make the target indifferent about creatures of your choice that it is hostile towards. I think that's the juice. Like the idea of it anti-canceling a charm is kind of interesting, but I honestly think it's better if it yeah, the target is, if it, like, uh, uh, again, yeah, it makes you not hostile. I think that's strong. Hostile toward. See, calm emotions. I like that one. I don't know if it's Xanax, obviously, uh, but, like, what is that? What, what is Xanax? It's like an antidepressant? I don't know what you would call it, but it's something along those lines, right? Like, it's a mood-altering drug. Um... So slowed, and now it's in this weird place where, like, a paralytic, like a sleeping drug and a tranquilizer are essentially the same thing. I like slow because it's so weird and fiddly, but it seems like you have a couple of them that are pretty similar. You have Zone of Truth, like, flavor-wise, right? Yeah, like an anti-anxiety drug. Our truth serum, I think, is fine. We could call it that. Yeah, okay. So the bark skin one, I think, is strong, but I feel like it's a little weird in comparison to some of the other ones we have. Weird's not bad, right? But I, I feel like some of these are pretty standard. 
Is sleep too powerful? Because, like, sleep, as it currently stands, they can be shaken out of it, right? Dr. Hubert's emotional extreme inhibitor. It's kind of funny to give them, like, snake oil salesman style names. Um, magical slumber. It totals how many hit points of creatures. Well, because the difference here is that sleep will only get you if you have a certain number of hit points. If this thing knocks you out, like, it just does it. Like, you just make a con save, and if you fail, you're incapacitated. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's a pretty standard maneuver. You could make it more like traditional sleep and have the point be that it's really only good to be used on a already weakened target. That's maybe strong. Yeah. Like, if the target has 5 to 8 hit points or fewer, it falls asleep. You can make it even less. 5 to 8 hit points or fewer. Target falls asleep. So make it 3d8 and then say that like they remain asleep for an hour. How long is that? It's one minute. So they remain asleep for an hour, so it's longer. They cannot be shaken awake. And only awaken if they take damage. Again, I'll reword it to make it sound a little better. Yeah, confusion is good. Confusion. Something similar to confusion. Yeah, Brent's coming with all these good, like, weird knockoff spells. So that gives us seven. I feel like we gotta get one more for eight. We could do fairy fire. I feel like I want another buff, like something that buffs Elizabeth. Cause a lot of these are sort of aggressive against, you know, so like paralytic sleep, tranquilizer. Yeah, maybe paralytic is this one, is the slow effect and this is the tranquilizer. It's funny cause like tranquilizer could almost work for like three or four of them. Confusion is good. What's fun about confusion is that we could even maybe potentially change, I mean, this is getting to be a pretty complex stat block as it is, but we could even change some of the effects as opposed to have them just be, yeah, I like the idea that all of Dr. Hubert's effects are bad knockoffs, so they never do as much as the real thing. Yeah, that's cool. Or they do it in like a weird way, you know? Oh, movement boost is cool. And that could maybe be put into the steroid though, right? Get a plus 10 bonus to speed. They can jump a bunch. I mean, you could do like an expeditious retreat thing where they can run super fast. But I feel like that still feels like the steroid, you know? But it's, it's a good, yeah, it's a good lateral thinking. Um, something that makes, I mean, the obvious one is something that like makes them deal more damage or makes them hit harder or be harder to hit. We kind of already have with the armor. It gives them more hit points. We kind of already have with healing. Um, so one thing that's interesting about confusion is I think we can play with what the effects are. Confusion has, you solve its movement to move in a random direction. It doesn't move or take actions. It uses its action to attack a randomly determined creature with its, within its reach, and the creature can move and act normally. Um, <laughs> Ritalin. Yeah, I was thinking about bioluminescence too. That's pretty good. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep fairy fire, but that's definitely, you know, what you, I think, I think it would be a fairy fire-like thing, right? I don't think it would be exactly the same thing as Fairy Fire, which I guess is kind of a buff because it's, all it does is it just helps Elizabeth hit. So we can maybe put that one back on the list. Um, let's do this. So it's easier formatting wise. Fairy Fire Bioluminescence. I want to think of like a, a different way to spin these mechanics. Oh boy. Bioluminescence. I want to steal your spelling there. Um, a short list of random effects. Or maybe it might be simpler to say that it has like one, like the, the creature moves in a random direction or do it, like pick one of them as opposed to having to be a whole bunch of them. Because I think having a table inside a table would get pretty crazy. Um, one thing I did really like about the, I think it's the, uh, the Grung Poisons in the game in a, a Tomb of Annihilation 
is that there's an option to make them like really weird and random. And maybe it's in Volo's guide to make them really weird and have random effects that like are are not just regular poison damage. Like they need to rub mud all over their body and they need to do something like that. Like I think something where it's confusion, but they're very strange and almost like distressing things like that they're compelled to do, like a compulsion, right? Maybe compulsion? Because that's a different spell. Like forces everybody to move, right? But random effect, random or strange effects. So basically they waste their turn. Like, I'm trying to think of like different manias. You know, like they're forced to spend around eating their hair or they're forced to spend around like biting their nails or like something that like gives this weird sense of of uh, disconnect and, and again, yeah, like mania as opposed to just standard confusion. Blur is pretty good. Yeah, let's put blur on the list. I think we're at eight now. I don't really want to get to 10. That feels like too many. Um, I think maybe let's lose bioluminescence. I think it's cool, but I think blur or a blur-like effect. Well, blur, correct me if I'm wrong, but blur just does the like displacement thing, right? That a... Uh, a Displacer Beast has. Yeah, for the duration, any creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. So what's the... Yeah, Hebert's increased targeting. That's interesting. Huh. So the thing with Blur and the thing with Slow is that they're basically just replicating extant spell effects. Which isn't bad. I mean, it's basically what we're doing with sleep, but we're changing it a little bit to make it unique. So, what is the what's the spin on blur and slow, frankly, that makes it more interesting? You know, what's what's Hubert's version of that? Yeah, the target gets advantage on the next attack is still good. Like and having like a blinking light, like a targeting thing. Um, yeah, we're spending a lot of time here. I don't think it's bad. We're just going to have to do this for the next level and the next level, too. I mean, but thankfully we have all these ideas we can go back and look at, right? So even if we don't use something like Fairy Fire or Blur or whatever. Um, so Blur normally imposes disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Does it... Yeah. What can we do that's similar to that? The thing about a flavor. So if, if you shot somebody with it, it would like distort where they are. Because I feel like that's hard to do with a drug. I mean, it's magical drugs, right? I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, how does the chassis work in combat? I mean, it's obviously got punching, right? That's its like primary attack is a slam. Trying to do this like a way to like is there is there an ability we can give the chassis that then would would go along with it? Um it's got melee. It probably has multi attack if it's like a CR two. So we'll give it multi attack or CR three or four. Multi attack. The chassis can attack. Can use its slam attack twice. I think the chassis has to be like relatively simple in terms of how it actually attacks. Do you know what I mean? Oh, these should all be like, these are attacks. Rubbery resistance grants disadvantage on attacks from hitting. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's interesting, dilated pupils. But again, that would be, it's that weird line between like what's a buff and what's a blur right that like what's a buff and what's a uh an attack because if you if you blur somebody else's pupils which is cool right then that's attacking them like i like the idea that he would turn and fire at elizabeth i like the idea of like rubbery resistance that it like turns her skin i mean I guess it's the chassis so it doesn't really have skin but it like makes them really goopy that's kind of interesting something like that is right it's a good flavor, Vaughn. I like that. Like rubbery. 
sort of call it like a laxative or something like that, but that's pretty good. Not a laxative, a, a fucking lubricant. Laxative, gross. Um, yeah, lubricant. So you shoot it and it like covers their body and then that gives disadvantage on attacks. Maybe it does the, uh, isn't there a stick? God, I don't know what monster this is. There's some monster that has like a stickiness to them. Thanks, Brent. You had a lot of great ideas, buddy. Um, like an adhesive. So it's the opposite, I guess, of lubricant. If it then, because it makes it sticky, but adhesive. It's like sovereign glue, essentially. Oh, the mimic. That's what it has. The mimic has adhesive. So I don't think it like it makes her harder to hit necessarily. But if you attack it. Right? The, you get stuck to it. So, um, the target adheres to anything that touches it. A huge or smaller creature adhered to the target is also grappled by it. Escape DCX ability checks made to escape this grapple have disadvantage. So then like he would fire it at the chassis or at Elizabeth or whatever. Right. Or it could be spray on, that's true. They don't necessarily have to all be syringes. I was imagining them as syringes. But like he would use that and then it would allow him to like then they would have disadvantage on their attacks, right? Not a disadvantage, but if they if they attack or they hit with any kind of a melee weapon, then they're stuck to them, whether it's a weapon or or whatever. Okay, yeah. I think that's pretty good. How many is that? That's eight. Um, chewing on hair. Or pull, like pulling out hair. What are some like creepy horror movie effects? Pulling on hair, chewing fingernails, <laughs> picking nose is too weird. But like something about like, you know, you have this weird like like anxious, nervous energy for the confusion one. Um, <laughs> these should all these should all have like right there are different attacks. Because technically it's an action. So he, he takes it out and it's a melee attack. He hits them. And if he hits them, then they take one point of damage and whatever, right? Like, I guess if he, if he wants to use it, is, is there a distinction between using it on the chassis and using it on an enemy, right? That, like, he, would he have to try to hit the chassis AC? Because, like, that would be pretty tough. Um, how does Cobalt Inventor... I mean, Cobalt Inventor, I guess, assumes that you're always attacking an enemy. You're not really healing yourself. You could break them up, right? You could give, you could put the, the positive ones in traits and the negative ones in, in like attacks. Weapon invention, yeah, those are all attacks for the kobold inventor. Um, amnesia could be a confusion effect. That's cool. That might be a good one for for higher level. Because I feel like that's a good random syringe. Like you forget, it would it be like short term memory or like long term memory? Yeah, that's really smart. I'm gonna put that at one of these ones up here. I like that one a lot. I should make a list of all the different syringe effects. Amnesia, because I, again, I like them to be not just okay. We copied a spell. Right, like the, a lot of the juice I think of this monster is that they have all these like really strange um, regeneration instead of healing. There might even be a thing too where like, I guess it's kind of similar to the temp hit points from the Shield of Faith bark skin thing, but there might be something interesting about this healing potion where it like, it continues to stack. That like, even once you're fully healed, you keep getting hit points and once you cross over your maximum, they just go into temps. Right, that it lasts for however long it lasts, a minute or something like that, and you just like keep getting hit points. 
And that's a little broken, right? But again, you're only using it presumably on a monster. You're not going to be using it on a PC. A PC is never going to have access to this ability. Maybe if they're working with him briefly. But even then, all that does is like highlight how cool Dr. Hubert is, right? That he has this, this formula. Okay. Um, so this obviously needs to be like structured. This is pretty chaotic right now. Um, I'm trying to think if he has any other traits. Like, I think this is a place for him to have like weird gadgets and things that he can do. Right, so it's kind of the opposite of what we just went through in terms of like, rather than effects he applies to people. Does he have like three gadgets at each level that give him other funky abilities, right? So like CR10, for example, he had, um, God, what did he all have? He had the uh, Helm of Comprehending Languages or whatever that he flavored as like the translation device, the Babblefish. He had, um, what, which other two did he pick? I think he picked... Oh, he picked the, like, lenses let him see really, really well. Like, are there gadgets or magic items that he can have that will grant him other sort of non combat -y abilities? Um, and I like the idea that they change at each level. So when you see him at CR5, he's got some stuff. And you see him at CR10, it's even better stuff. Like, what are some... What are just some crazy ideas? Like, he could have, you know, rocket boots or uh, magnetic boots or a jet pack or something crazy like that, right? Like a... Like a proton pack kind of a thing. You know, what are some, like, crazy classic... Um... Yeah, cancerous growth is... Oh, that's really cool. Keeps healing past your max hit points. The excess hit points become scabrous, grows, granting temporary hit points. I really like that. They're like, it's good. Don't you want it? Don't you understand? It's positive, but it's, like, really nasty. That keep growing even past your maximum hit points. And the idea that, like, God, you got to think about how he uses some of these. Like, if he if he uses this on the construct, does it start to grow flesh? That's fucking horrifying. Ugh. Nice work, Vaughn. Creepy. Um, what did you call it? Cancerous growth. So what kind of uh, gadgets can he have? I'll make just a big list, and then we can break it down by... I think, like, obviously, that they get crazier the higher level he is. Oh, we did want him to have, like, a mount form, right? Where he can, like, ride on her back. Is that something that we see at this level, or does that maybe happen next time? Why is this in... That's weird. Get out of this font. Get back to Ariel. Because I don't feel like he's like really going to be riding around on this version of her. But let's make a list of some cool ideas. Um, so rocket boots slash jetpack. Yeah, moving forward later, I agree. That's a, that's a CR10. Because even in CR10, he, like, he doesn't have the saddle, right, like in the adventure. So maybe at like CR10, he gets the ability to ride her. And then at CR15, he's like built himself a little like a howda, right? Because I imagine at that point, she's huge size. Um, rocket boots, jetpack, uh, grappling gun is a cool gadget. Um, he's got the like shield of faith armor thing. Armor boost, but that feels more like a syringe. Let's take that off. Um, he's got uh, dark vision slash true sight goggles, right? Something like that. Cool goggles. He's got the helm of comprehend languages. He's got like underwater breathing apparatus. Like all kind of utility stuff, you know, nothing that breaks the bank necessarily. Like, True Sight's pretty good, but it's not gonna, you know, really affect the CR too much. Um, oh, there's some just, like, cool mad scientist-type powers. Something like shock gloves or, like, something like that. Like, I like the idea of electricity being, being important to him, especially at higher levels, if electricity was a big part of, like, how Elizabeth became Elizabeth. So something like shock gloves or like static gloves or something like that. Oh, maybe rather than um, rocket boots, he's got uh, like boots of spider climb. 
I know, like magnetic. I think uh, static shoes, right? Oh gosh, that's horrifying, Vaughn. Elizabeth Golem form could potentially be growing extra parts that he pulls off and he uses poisoned weapons or like little fucking gross uh, embolisms or whatever he can pull off and throw. That's horrendous. Um, I'm gonna write that down. That's a higher level thing. That feels like a CR 15. God, yuck, 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 yuck. Oh, we also made the point that uh, at CR 15 he shoots bone weapons. Oh no. <laughs> Bone weapons slash gross pustules that Hubert can throw. I think he the problem with ranged weapons, <laughs> she's armed, but it, shh, um, he does have the. It was Brent's idea, I think, last time we did this, uh, that he has the crossbow that shoots um, syringes. But I think that's pretty nasty. I'm gonna look at the Bone Devil. Um, what are some other cool gadgets? So what, what gadgets do we think he has at this level? You could give him like dark vision now and then give him like... Uh, bone Devil basically just has the sting. He doesn't really have any cool bone abilities, unfortunately. It's disappointing. I don't know about bone weapons it's pretty gruesome i mean that's good that's maybe what maybe where we're going right it's like body horror stuff especially with a high level elizabeth i could see her having a bunch of like bones that stick out of her you know that like getting in melee with her or if she grapples you you get like pierced by all these like weird extra unnecessary bones that she has god ew um a hate effect how do you mean by hate I mean, it sounds cool. I'm interested. Talk to me. Um, no shot gloves. Haste effect. Oh, haste effect. Oh, for like his gadgets or for her? I could see him having a haste effect. I think that's like higher level. Maybe it's like a time turner kind of a thing where he can like overclock himself, right? And he can do a bunch of stuff. Um, I think that's on him, though. I feel like giving her haste is, like, cool, but I like the idea that he, that lets him buff her even more, you know? Yeah, I think that's cool. You're right on the money. Um, so I think at each level, he's got three gadgets, and they are sort of of increasing power, and they're different each time. Um, so let's try to think of, like, three or four more simple... How many do we have right now? We have one... Two, three, four, five, six. So we, we at minimum we need three more. Um I think I boots a spider climb. I mean some kind of a jet pack or a rocket pack or something, I think is cool. Rocket pack. Like just crazy, you know, science fiction uh like a death ray is too much, right? He's got the hand crossbow that shoots syringes. Um, magnets are very um, oh, like a rust thing, right? With like a rust monster, because like a, a big magnet feels very mad scientist to me. That you could like pull armored characters to him and things like that. That's cool. He's got the boots of spider climb for sure. There might be a way to like ratchet it up. Magnetic gloves, maybe. Instead of the shot gloves, so he lets him like pull weapons to him. It's kind of fun. Um, magnetic gloves. Some kind of yeah, lightning power, right? Like he's all about electricity. If he's like a scientist, sort of a Tesla esque thing. Um, fire. Breathe underwater. Maybe it's like it's less of underwater breathing. It's like a gas mask, so he's immune to immune to poison. Doesn't can survive without air for an hour, right? Like it has water breathing essentially. You 
You know, it's it's gas mask as opposed to shock that stuns and does some damage. Yeah, something like that. I'm trying to think like, is it a taser? That's kind of cool. Let's put a taser on there. I'm trying to think like, how would it be flavored? Because um, he's got the crossbow, so I, I want to try to avoid giving him too many like ranged attacks. Because I think that hand crossbow is his primary thing. Um, I think that's six, or that's nine. So I think he's got like so a handful of these are very very utility and like not really combat related. So like helmet comprehend languages is definitely one. Goggles is definitely one. Boots of spider climb is cool. I like him having the, the the mask early on. That that's like a big part of his look is wearing this like horrible mask. And then he's got the goggles. So maybe he starts with underwater underwater breathing apparatus. Uh, goggles and then the helm. I mean, it could be compounding. I just feel like that's a lot of stuff for him, right? Lightning rod. Maybe yeah, that's his melee weapon. Oh, a magnetic belt. All a Baron Harkonnen. Yeah, I could see that. Something like that. Um, yeah, you know, maybe it's better if they just get progressively... Is it like, does he has... He has he, cause there's a couple of options you could do. He could have... I see, I see three different ways. He could have three different gadgets every time, and the gadgets just get progressively more powerful every time, right? So it's like... Ooh, that's pretty gruesome. I don't think he would quite have that yet. That's very terrifying. And, uh... uh kind of off brand i mean not that he's not scary but i feel like it's like him spreading a bunch of nasty tentacles from his face but the idea of a gas mask made out of a, a mind, mind flayer face is pretty scary um so if you have three you can do it this way structurally you can have three different inventions every time right and each time there are different inventions but they're progressively more powerful inventions so like he starts with you know the grappling gun and then he gets the boots of spider climb and then he gets the jetpack you could do it where it's compounding, where he constantly, each each level he gets three new inventions. So that way by the time he's the 15, CR 15, he's got nine inventions and he's full of stuff, which is kind of cool. Or you could do it where he has three inventions, basically three kinds of inventions, like goggles, gloves, and boots or something like that. And then those three just get more powerful each time. So he starts off with just magnetic gloves let them pull things to him but then they get shock power and they do get to do something else let him fly or whatever right and then he's got goggles that get progressively more powerful or let him do progressively more things he can see through walls and stuff like that and then he's got the belt or something like that i think it, that might be the answer yeah three items that improve goggles gloves and boots i think you're exactly right and that, that all feels very you know dr hubert to me and then that's something we could put in the the can the write up too is that like you can get those items right so if you kill him at this stage the goggles do this if you get him at this stage you get his boots and his gloves I want to make like five or six more magic items for him that are just like things you find in his lair right or other things he might have in his bag um, you can I mean you can get his bag full of medicine because he's so like reliant on his equipment i feel like that's a big avenue of content here or, like what kinds of crazy magic items does he have so yeah i think you're right three items that improve is the right answer there vaughn you're smart so gadgets he's got three of them so gloves goggles and boots so let's see what are our options here for gloves, I think magnetic gloves are strong. So maybe the gloves give him... So here, yeah. He can... The two ideas we have so far are... Um, magnetic in, the, in terms of like pulling things to him, right? So he can pull metal objects to his hands. Like Magneto. And then shocking with them, which I think is also cool, like static electricity. Is there another? Um, is there another angle on like like the gloves? Other things the gloves could do. 
like a non-combat function or a you know it's easy to do stuff like oh magnetic mage hand is cool is that separate from his ability to pluck items because i feel like because the way Mage Hand works, my understanding is they're actually this is kind of a, a at your individual tables thing. But when I looked it up, Mage Hand can't be used on any item that is being worn or carried. But is that the progression? Do we say that at first he gets Mage Hand, you know, and we make it even maybe even stronger than Mage Hand? We say that it's like out to a range of a hundred feet or sixty feet, and it can lift fifty pounds, right? So it's like both hands, and he's able to pick things up, and that's the first one. So he gets that, and it's like functional but not particularly useful. Um, oh, what about telekinesis? The, like they, the gloves essentially have telekinesis. That's the spell, right? That might be like a way to do a more powerful version of it. How does telekinesis work in 5e? Starts as mage hand, goes to telekinesis, and then gets like shock power as well. If he grabs you with it, he can pick you up and then send a like, like fucking hit you with electricity. Oh, telekinesis is real complicated. Maybe mage hand's stronger. I like the idea of him being able to grab a person and move them around. That seems cool to me. Maybe that's too high level. But definitely, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's like starts as mage hand increases to something like telekinesis. Maybe not exactly the spell because the spell is pretty complicated. Um, ends with lightning damage. So goggles feels like it goggles feels like it ends with the true sight, but I feel like you could do like pass wall lets you make holes. Is there like a, a an X ray vision spell? My Google is so fucked. Every time I try to search anything, it constantly just like uh uh. It always adds five e to the end of everything. So I search X ray vision, and the first Google suggestion is X ray X ray vision five e. All I do is search D and D terms. Infravision, yeah. Is that a spell? Yeah, let's just see through solid matter. It's a radius of thirty feet. Infravision five E, yeah. Good Google man. Yeah, I don't think it's an actual spell, but we can certainly make it happen. So it seems like it starts with dark vision, and then goes to true sight, and then goes to infravision, or some version thereof, like x-ray. That doesn't feel very powerful to me. That seems like something you could just like put in his, in his like, in his senses, in his perception, you know? Is there a way to make that stronger or more fun? I mean, obviously stuff like he shoots lasers out of his eyes, you know? His advantage on... Yeah, you're right. Well, because True Sight and X-Ray are actually different things. There is an item, at least in the, on the compendium on Roll20, called the Ring of X-Ray Vision. Well, I mean, it's crazy that that's the name of it. But it lets you see into and through solid matter for one minute. This vision has a radius of 30 feet. To use solid objects within the radius appear transparent and don't prevent light from passing through them. The vision can penetrate one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, or up to three feet of wood or dirt. So the idea of him having x-ray vision seems fine to me, especially at like level 15 or whatever. That's his high level thing. Oh, a gaze attack. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. So you start with dark vision makes sense, but I, I, even then I still feel like that's not very good as an open, like as an ability. Like so many monsters just get dark vision for free, you know? Petrification is really good. I really like that. Like, yeah, Basil, looks, and like there's a cool thing you do with the glasses where he like slots one in, right? Like this is the one that'll get you. So yeah, that's, that's so good. I think he starts with true sight. That seems crazy, but I think he does. I think he starts with true sight. And then he gets... Uh, X-ray. 
Unless there's a different thing we can do there. Like, because I love the petrification as, like, an attack, right? Because the notion of, like, you can't be invisible around him. He's got this, these fancy goggles is cool to me, right? I think technically the, the ones he has are, like, goggles of minute seeing. They're, like, actually not that powerful, but... I mean, you could just have dark vision with, like, oh, scrying shit, dude. <laughs> But that's fine. I don't think they all have to be combat. I just think they have to be, like, interesting, right? Oh, that's really good. And now I can't decide what's the right order. Uh, he does technically... He never used it um, in the adventure because they were always together. But he does technically have uh, uh, Hubert in the, in the child does technically have, like, it's called Arcane Senses, where, like, a familiar, he can see through... Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, he can see through her eyes. So it could be something like that, too, where it's like... But I feel like scrying is so good. What is Jose saying? How about enlarge for the goggles as an ending? So he doesn't have to work with small parts. So he can use the enlarge. That's really funny, actually. But I feel like he, he would probably have access to enlarge a lot earlier than that, right? Like, that to me is a syringe. That's how it appears in the podcast. He stabs her and she gets huge. I love the idea of, like, <laughs> he's, like, losing his sight. So he just casts it large on, like, small gear pieces that he's working with to make it easier. That's, like, the most fucking senile wizard thing I've ever heard of is casting it large on, like, on, like, a book because you can't read the text, right? So you cast it large on it, like, oh, there we go. Enlarge font. Enlarge and reduce font. That's so funny. Um, so something here, like scrying. Do we do true sight scrying petrification? Or just true, true sight petrification scrying? I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, it might be too powerful to say he's like CR3 or CR2 or whatever, and then he has true sight and x-ray vision. But like... Scrying and petrification are so powerful. I feel like that's the only place to put them. I do think, like, X-ray vision is cooler than true sight. Or, like, not cooler. I do think X-ray vision is, like, more thematic than true sight. So maybe we do X-ray vision here. And then he gets scrying, and then he gets petrification. That might be the way to do it. Um, so one of these versions for the boots is definitely spider climb. Right? It's, like, flavored as magnetic. But then what else? Like, rocket obviously makes sense. You do the opposite. He can then he then he can fly, right? They're still magnetic boots, but he's like pushing off the ground, either like Baron Harkonnen style or whatever. Um, that's I think got to be the last version, because here's the, yeah the trick with him too is that he needs to be more powerful when he's mounted on Elizabeth. Um, so you don't want to like disincentivize him from doing that. You could have it be just like crazy jumping as opposed to. Uh, uh, what should I call it? Um, flying. The other problem, though, is that like if he has magnetic boots, that feels like it's kind of the same thing as him having magnetic gloves. You know that they feel like they need to be like a set at that point. Oh, expeditious retreats, really good. You're killing it, Vaughn. I don't like fly. I think fly is wrong for him. There's even, like, a whole joke in the podcast about how he can't fly. That's, like, one of his few abilities. That, like, everyone else in the party can fly except for him. So I don't think he has fly, but I think Expedition Retreat is really good. Um, gosh, you guys are doing all my work. Expedition Retreat. What's the high-level one? Not fly. Is a teleport thing? Feels too magical. Pass wall or... Cause like I don't mind them not being like actively combat abilities, but they should have like interesting utility to be used in combat, right? Is there is there a non spell related thing we can do? Because one thing I like the the lightning damage and the magnetic gloves. Like I don't think it should just be, ideally it would just be like repetitions of spells that already exist. So what else could they do? Um, obviously like rocket boots and stuff exists, but I feel like that's flying, um, kicking doors down is not very Hubert at all. Um, having weapons hidden in them is also not very Hubert. Like, 
springing or jumping, like having springs on the bottom of it are very goofy Inspector Gadget scientist type stuff. But not that interesting because it just would be increased jump, which I think we've already covered in the syringe. Um, because he can always inject himself with his own serums. Oh, pass without a trace isn't bad. Um, pass without trace. <laughs> pass without trace isn't terrible. It's a little flat because I feel like it's so utility, you know, it's so specific. But I guess that makes him stealthy, right? Pass Without Trace isn't just, oh, Levitation. Levitation's not bad. I think Levitation, Spider Climate, Expeditious, Expeditious Retreat could be could work. Because Pass Without Trace is like improved stealth, right? It isn't just that you don't leave tracks. Um, and I feel like the boots conferring all of that, right, would be tough. If this was third edition, then we could give him a bonus to move silently, like the Boots of Elven Kind, but it is not third edition, so move silently is not a separate skill. How I don't understand how they, they went, like, wording-wise in third edition, they picked move silently rather than, like, sneak or stealth, right? Because I guess he had hide, but the notion of those two things being different is so cr crazy to me. Spot and listen is two different skills. Magnetic levitation, yeah, I think makes sense. So Spider Climb, Expeditious Retreat. So I think he starts with Expeditious Retreat and then he gets Spider Climb and then it goes to Levitation, right? That makes sense to me it's in terms of like power. Expeditious Retreat, Spider Climb, Levitation. I mean, it's magnetic again, but that's fine. As long as the magnetic abilities are different, like the boots and the, the gloves aren't like, you know, doing exactly the same thing. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. I mean, again, it all needs to be structured, but that feels pretty good to me in terms of Hubert. I like that Hubert is like a big, messy stat block and that the construct is just like, it punches things, right? Is there anything that the construct is missing right now? Like, I'll put in the stats right, for the punching that I'm not too worried about. Um, but is there anything that the construct is missing currently? Or do we think it's good? I feel like it's got the anti-magic susceptibility thing. Are there any like golem features that we don't have here that we're like we're missing that we feel are lacking from this version? I don't really think so. It's got magic resistance. I mean, we could give it like immutable form and stuff, but that feels very golemy. Because otherwise, I think we could move on to the next iteration. Then it's just coming up with more syringes and stuff. Um, immutable form, lightning absorption, aversion to fire, magic weapons. Yeah, I think that I think that that's plenty. We could give it the berserk power, but I feel like that's not quite right for the golem. At least not yet. Uh, the way that we it hasn't actually come up in. Uh, oh yeah, let's do this. So it has one more trait, um, and it's something about. Um, I don't know the name of it, but it is similar to um, how Animate Dead works. When Dr. Hubert, or if Dr. Hubert is incapacitated, incapacitated. Dr. It, it's almost like the, um, the Shield Guardian or whatever. Uh, the chassis takes no action. Something along those lines. That like, the notion is that this is something that's in um, Elizabeth as she currently stands that hasn't come up yet, but if he ever appears again, which I hope he will, um, if Dr. Hubert drops unconscious and Elizabeth is still conscious, that she basically, that's when her berserk triggers, is that once he goes down, she loses it and panics, and the sort of flesh golem berserk ability happens. We didn't want him to be constantly be rolling, but we liked the idea that she became really dangerous to the rest of the party if he wasn't there to control her. So I think the lower level version of that for the construct, for the chassis, is that it just does nothing. It just turns off, right? That it's, it's maybe there's even something about like there's a mental link between the two of them, right? Here, I gotta blow my nose, one second. Come on, 
Mute. Mute. My stupid microphone, you guys. Sometimes it's dumb. I will not. It will not let me mute. Uh, one second. Okay, I desperately hope you could not hear that. Yeah, and now a word from our sponsor, Word. Okay, um, so something along those lines. Obviously, this needs to be reworded, but the idea that it just it takes no action, right? It doesn't even. I don't. I don't even think it's like animate dead. I think it does not defend itself. It just stands there and gets wailed on, right? Um, something about like uh, all attacks against it have advantage because it doesn't try to get out of the way. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's do Dr. Hubert at the next level. So he's CR. We're gonna put CR5 for right now, but that's obviously not the CR he actually will be at. It will change that when it gets time. So now, the question is, for the CR10 and CR15 versions of Dr. Hubert, um, the gadgets we've kind of figured out, like those just improve, right? Because they improve. They're like the more advanced versions of them. But I also don't think they lose their previous abilities. You know, the magnetic gloves can still do Mage Hand, even though they can now pull weapons to them or whatever. Um, so this is the CR10 version. Codependence, that's cool. I like codependence. Good name, dude. You're killing it today, Vaughn. Nice work. Codependence. I don't think, yeah, I think that if the chassis goes out, I think Hubert is fine. Maybe there's a cool ability you could have where if uh, Elizabeth uh, is knocked unconscious that... Uh, Dr. Hubert has to, it changes his behavior or something like that, right? That, like, he has disadvantage on attack. Almost as, like, the frightening condition or something like that if she goes down. That, like, it changes his, I think, at higher levels, like, it's at 15 um, and 10. So then, yeah, that's still Dr. Hubert. So the question is, do we think that at higher levels, what do we do about these syringes? I don't think we should do the same thing that we did before. I think that the syringes should get, should be different at this level. A, they're randomized, right? They're not labeled um, at this point. So this is Elizabeth Flesh Golem. I think the syringes are not labeled now. So now it's always random. You don't have the ability to choose, right? You just roll. And that there's a good chance that you might end... I think, I think in that case, we have to skew it a little bit, right? I think that the chances of buffing need to go down because most likely he'll be using them against his enemy. Like, do we want to... Like, the idea that he could accidentally end up buffing a hero, I think, is really interesting. But if this is his primary means every round of attack, right? If there's a 50-50 chance of him buffing or harming whoever he's intending... Like, that seems like that really, really reduces his efficacy, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm concerned that... Do we need to do we need to mess with that ratio? Because right now, I think we have, like, eight... Let's see. That's uh, an attack, an attack, a buff. Okay, an attack. We have two attacks. Starting from the bottom, we have two attacks. We have a buff. Three attacks. We have two buffs. We have three buffs, four buffs. Yeah, so we have four and four is what we have right now between buffs and attacks, right? Or debuffs, buffs and debuffs. So at this version, 
do we want to keep the same thing? Is there is it a 50-50 chance of buffing and debuffing? I guess that makes sense because we don't know how often he will... Uh, we don't know how the DMs will play the character, right? Like... I'm just worried that you'll end up in a situation where he is only buffing the heroes and only harming Elizabeth, which I feel like is backwards. Like, yes, they're not labeled, but maybe it, they should mostly be debuffs with some buffs and the chance that he could accidentally heal somebody, right, is lower. Oh. Make all the syringes designed for a golem physiology. They work one way on Elizabeth and have a different effect on others. That's fascinating. I th so I guess that's my question then. Do you do you keep the same ones? Because I feel like you don't. I feel like you come up with new syringes every time. Because I think if it's like the same handful of syringes every time you face him, it gets kind of boring. I think you do new syringes at each tier. They might be like takes on old syringes. Maybe they just get more powerful. But I think I think that's really interesting. It's gonna balloon his stat block, right? But I think you're onto something with like, so like the gadgets we improve them. So those ideas don't change. Okay, yeah, we could do that. But I think that the it it helps Elizabeth only comes in towards the end. I I do think that like. There needs to be some chance of accidentally harming a hero. I think that's kind of fun. Um, you're accidentally healing a hero. That's kind of fun. But I, I, I love the idea that they they only work for her. And that if you... So, like, if you if he hits Elizabeth with Enlarge, which we don't have yet. See, this is what I mean. There might be someone need to rewrite. But if he hits Elizabeth with Enlarge Reduced, she's always enlarged. If he hits an enemy, they're always reduced. Right? That, like, they're specifically keyed to her. They work like a dagger. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. I think that Elizabeth still takes the damage, even if it's one point. Yeah, it's interesting. I think you're right. I think it's simpler to just improve what we have, but then I might want to go through and change some stuff. Because I, I think the paralytic... I think that's not what we want. I think we need an, an enlarge, enlarge reduce, I think has to be represented somewhere, you know? But I lo yeah, I love the idea of two effects, of the golem effect and the target effect. But I still, I still think maybe one of the eight should just be like a standard healing potion or something like that. Because I think some of the fun of the randomness is that you may accidentally end up buffing a hero, right? So like, but then what, what are the golem versions of these? So like, what's a tranquilizer do? Does it give her, like, a haste effect? Lots of combinations, but list the effect on Elizabeth and the effect on others. Yeah, I mean, I, th I can see how we would do that, I guess. So, if, so is it always the opposite, right? Like, or do we do... Sorry, I'm just trying to, like, figure this out because it's, like, such a mindfuck moment. It's really good. I really like it. I think it's the right direction. But how exactly do you do it, right? Um, so you could just do the opposite every time. Right, like you could just say that, so for example, ster the steroid one, right, could hyper improve the character. Uh, I mean, the steroid one could be enlarged, essentially, right, at this level. I think that could work. Um, so you could do the opposite, and you could say that, like, if it hits a, a, an enemy, it shrinks them. It shrinks them. They suck, yada yada. Right. But if it hits Elizabeth, it enlarges her. It enlarges her, makes her stronger, etc., etc. Enhance adrenaline. Yeah, opposite would be the simplest concept. I agree. Because there's something kind of fun about that, too, that, like, they see these great 
so they, they see him stab Elizabeth with like a green syringe or something like that and then she gets huge and super powerful and then when they kill him or they take his bag they take the green syringe like cool I'll do it and then they get wah, wah, like tiny and withered right that they don't understand okay cool so if it's opposites so that's again this is so messy I'm going to clean this up before next time so you said cancerous growth I think cancerous growth heals her um Enemy, let's just do Elizabeth first. Yeah, she gets hit more hit points. She heals up, etc. And then enemy, uh, the characters contract a disease. Like, do they take poison damage? Like, deals poison damage. Maybe it's like, um, um, Oh yeah, sure. Take liberties and the opposites. I think that makes sense. Maybe it's like because the way we have the the healing working right now is they just constantly keep getting more hit points. Maybe it's like a necrosis, like it sucks hit points away from them. Deals necrotic damage as they wither away. Or I mean, the other option because it's a growth. So maybe the other option is that they're like getting bulkier and scabbed and like horrifying as they scab over. Ugh, that's so gross. Um, so a tranquilizer, then the it would have like a hasting effect on Elizabeth, right? Like rather than putting her to sleep, it would make her, well, I guess that's the, the paralytic, right? Would be a hasting effect. She's hasted. Enemy. They're slowed. I don't know how I feel about slowed because I just think it's so strange. And I don't know how to like beef it up. Confusion. So against them, it makes them take random behavior. Does it like break a curse or break a charm or like give her advantage on saving throws? Like it doesn't feel very strong, but something like that, like Elizabeth, it gives her like clarity of purpose, right? Clarity, advantage on saving throws. But she's already got that, she has magic resistance. Hmm, I don't know what the opposite of confusion would be in this case. Cause it's like, or we're calling it compulsion or whatever. Um, adhesive, that seems pretty clear that like, that's like a web effect, right? For an enemy, they get stuck to the ground and they can't move. Elizabeth is adhesive and grants disadvantage on attacks. Oh no, not grants disadvantage. I mean, you could add that, right? But like, she's hard to hit. A bless for confusion? Yeah. Could work. It doesn't feel like exactly the opposite, but you're, you're right, like we should be taking liberties. Zone of truth, calm emotion. So like that is like, it makes her angrier, like a rage mechanic. It's her extra damage or rage or something, right? Um, enemy is calmed. Or soothed. the armor one and the sleep one. So what's the opposite of like sleep? I mean, it wakes her up, right? But like, what does that mean mechanically speaking? Well, I could be the opposite of like, if she's dead, it's like a like an adrenaline shot, right? Like it, it brings her back to life with however many hit points. Yeah, Elizabeth smash for sure in rage. Is it like a revivify? But, that's, but then what happens if you hit her when she's not unconscious, right? I don't know what this one is. This one's tough. Enemy, they go to sleep. Nappy time. Shield of Faith. Elizabeth is armor. And then enemy. Um, so, hey, see you later, Vaughn. Thanks for coming. I'm probably going to wrap up in the next couple minutes here. I feel like we're getting to a stopping point. Thanks for coming, dude. 
Yeah, what is the opposite of sleep? And what is the opposite of armor? I mean, it makes them more vulnerable, I guess. Oh, it like rusts their own armor away? It's like acidic? Yeah. Burns away their armor. It reduces their AC. Deals acid damage, yeah. What is the opposite of sleep? Cause it seems like more action, right? Like we have haste for the tranquilizing, but we don't have a good one. Huh. I might have to come back to this one. Okay, let's see, it's almost 7.30. Let me check how we doing here. So I feel like that's a lot of good progress. I'll need to take all this and synthesize it and make sure that all the, the math works out. I'm thinking about calling it. So let's maybe talk a little bit while we're here about Elizabeth and what she's like at this level, but then I think I might be done for tonight. So she's still got the slam. I think she's got immutable form. Immutable, immutable form, normal golem stuff. Give her lightning absorption. Absorption? How do you spell absorption? I think it's with a P. Can't be polymorphed. Oh. What if we lose slowed and we make it polymorph? Because then we can make the opposite of this one be haste. And we make this one polymorph? What's the positive angle on polymorph? She like mutates? She like grows extra arms or like gets an extra attack or something like that? Yeah. I think that's right. She mutates, gets extra attacks or extra speed or something or something. I mean, it's pretty similar to the steroid one, but I think mutating and getting like extra stuff is cool. She grows like an extra face, like a weird head and gets better perception and she gets extra attacks. And then the enemy is that they're polymorphed into something crazy. I can't figure out what, like, the right flavor there. Like, what do they get polymorphed into? Because, like, witches would polymorph you, polymorph you into, like, a toad or a frog or something. But I don't think the opposite of sleep is bless. I think the opposite of bless is bane. Do you know what I mean? That, like, sleep incapacitates you. Like, you go out. You, have, you take no actions. So the opposite of that is to take more actions. I think that's haste. Like I, but even then, I guess all that does is grant you an extra attack, which is what the mutate does. I think polymorph's really solid, but I, I need to figure out the, the flavor on it, like the taste of it. Polymorphed into something crazy. Like, so what would a mad scientist turn you into? You know, mad scientists do like body switching and weird stuff like that. Like, is there some kind of a, like you switch bodies with somebody? It's a really weird, complicated mechanic I don't think we have time for.
They get polymorph because I feel like they have to polymorph into something like weird and gr- like gruesome, you know, like a gibbering mouther or something. They get all like mixed around, but that's so horrific. I feel like you can't really come back from that. And it's usually the super soldier thing, yeah, and that makes them super strong. So something they're polymorph into something crazy and gruesome and yucky. Talk to some, yeah. I'll try to think think about it. Something crazy and. Gruesome and yucky. Okay. I just realized I have my headphones on for no reason. Like, I'm not listening to anything. Why do I have my headphones on? Um, yeah, then I think she just gets multiple attacks. I think I feel like Elizabeth is, like, relatively straightforward at each one of these times, you know? And then, yeah, the tranquilizer is haste. Yeah, I think that's good. They just, I don't know about shock, but you know what I mean? Like, they turn into something really gross that, like, they get horrible. Uh, uh, and that's, like, you know, that's maybe the D D8 is the mutation one. And they get really, really nasty and gross. And they turn into some kind of a awful John Carpenter monster for a bit, and then they can save out of it, and they're like their flesh reconstitutes, and they're back to normal. I think that's fine. I think that like having a weird body horror thing is okay. Like, do they attack their allies? Like, are they just like weird, mad people? Right? I think like a madness one is kind of interesting. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm gonna call it there. Uh, let's let's real quick confirm what these gadgets are for him at this level. So he has telekinesis here. Gloves are telekinesis. Uh, now it's scrying. And then it's spider climb. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, cool. It's about 7.30 here. I'm going to call it, I think. I think we got some good work. It's very messy. That's something I'll have to do is... Uh... Oh, the mounted combatant thing. I forgot. Let me put that in really quick. Um, so he's also got mounted combatant. This version. Better when on her back, but if she takes damage or makes an athletics check, he has to make a dexterity saving throw to stay on. Um, cool. I should look at the magic combat rules, but it's, it's essentially that, yeah. You can treat her as a mount. Okay, cool. I feel good about that. That seems strong to me. And then I think we can uh, go from there for next time. So next time, so over the week, I will try to synthesize all of this, and then we'll try to do CR15 um, version for next week. I will be here next week. Hopefully we can wrap up uh, Hubert. Because then after that, I think I'm, I'm taking a week off from social media and stuff uh, while I prepare for the next Yog arc. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming out, those of you who came out. Um, I hope that it's been fun. Thank you so much for all your ideas and your suggestions. I mean, again, that's the nice thing about these streams is that, you know, I, I, you do half the work. Like, I don't, if I'm just in alone in a dark room, it's very difficult for me to come up with all these great ideas. If I didn't have everybody's input, the monster would not be nearly as interesting. I think this is going to be some really fun to play with. I like how different they all are. It really feels like, I mean, obviously that's a credit so much to the, to the players, but I think it really feels like these are very vastly different enemies and campaigns even that these characters would appear in um i'm really excited to see where we go with the uh with eric who's next and then with the three villains that appear in the uh the watchtower which if you're not have, if you have not checked that out oh the letter society interesting oh tell me about that jose it kind of sounds like the the because that's my thing with TOAs. I find that hook to be very bland. Tell me more about the Letter Society, man. I'm, I always want to hear more about it. Um, yeah, feel free to contact me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever if you want to talk about TOA. I'm running it right now and having a good time. 
Uh, great. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will be back next week, same time, same place, and we will hopefully finish out Dr. Hubert. Thanks for coming and giving all your input. Uh, happy adventuring.